bless his name today. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is a wonderful God. You can be seated as we prepare tonight to give in our offering. Don't forget, amen, a youth Christmas party Friday night at 7 o'clock. We need to bring a gift to exchange, wear an ugly sweater, and invite somebody. <laughs> amen. I guess that's the criteria. To come. Praise God. Also, Sunday night after service is a pitch in. Amen. For the church and to come, and we'll celebrate. Amen. Christmas together. That'd be the last. This coming Sunday is the last Sunday before Christmas. Amen. So prepare for that. Yes, ma'am. Tuesday, there's going to be a ladies' luncheon. Just get with me after church if you're able to come. All right. Tuesday, you come after service tonight, meet my wife, and you'll get all the fine details. Praise God. Brother Owens, Brother Barnes, would you come? And amen. Let's praise God. Receive our offering today.
We are here today. We bless you today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. How many belongs to him tonight? Amen. If you have your Bibles this afternoon, I'd like to go to the book of 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 14 and 15 tonight. 2 Corinthians 12, 14. Behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you. I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Verse 15, and I will verily gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. I will verily gladly spend. He gives some words that describes how he spends. It was very gladly he spends and be spent for you. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the life of sacrifice. Would you repeat those words? A life of sacrifice. Amen. You can be seated after you're seated. Would you clap your hands to the Lord and give us some praise? Hallelujah. Jesus began not only to preach concerning sacrifice, but he also lived the life of sacrifice. Amen. He said such things that the birds have their nests and the foxes have the hose, but the Son of Man have no place to lay his head. That's right. We would find that when he come to his to the end of his life, apparently the only thing that he actually owned was literally the clothes on his back. Jesus told them on the mountain that they would be, should not be concerned with tomorrow, neither should their life and ambitions be wrapped up in worldly gain. We told them that they were to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness right. and all these other things shall be added unto you. Thank God today that he is our example concerning a life of sacrifice. But did you understand that the Apostle Paul, when he begins to write about coming to those that were at the church at Corinth, it was not to seek what was theirs, but was to seek them. He loved them. And he had put up spiritual treasures for them. For he gave the admonition that children should not lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. So in a spiritual form, the Apostle Paul, being their spiritual father, laid up spiritual treasures for them. He went on to say that very gladly he spent and be spent far. Everybody say far. Far them. His life was wrapped up in spending and being spent for the spiritual welfare of the Corinthian church. And so we would note here, that even though they had a lot of misgivings and a lot of flaws in their spiritual makeup, he continued to spend and be spent for their spiritual welfare. And so we would note here that the life of sacrifice the Apostle Paul was very aware of. For again in 2 Corinthians, the chapter prior, Chapter 11, 23 through 30, he says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. 
of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. In other words, there were five times he received thirty-nine stripes. If you would multiply, you would find that it was about somewhere around 195 stripes throughout his life. He received not of the heathen or the Gentile, but of the Jews themselves. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, and thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeys often, in the perils of waters, and the perils of robbers, and the perils of my own countrymen, and the perils by the heathen, and perils in the city, and the perils in the wilderness, and the perils in the sea, and the perils among false brethren. Verse 27, in wilderness, wilderness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides all these things that are without, that which cometh on me daily, amen, the church or the care of the churches. Who is weak? I'm not weak. Who is offended? I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory. In the, firmity, in the things which concern my infirmity, he did not allow these things or the life of sacrifice amen to cause him to become weak to be offended be re, uh, resentment residing in his heart because he understood that there was a great need that lied before him and if there come a time that he must glory then he would glory in the things concerning his infirmity we need to understand the first thing that needs to come through our mind is that when we sacrifice, we should never become offended of what we think is right or what we think is wrong concerning the life of sacrifice. You see, the last beatitude that Jesus spoke of was not on the mountain. But it was there when they come and asked him, disciples of John the Baptist, are you the one that is to come or should we look for another? And Jesus told them, the eyes of the blind are open, etc., etc. Then he said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Hallelujah. You see, when we sacrifice, we are doing it unto the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, let yeah. me say, and let me clarify. When we do things, we just can't naturally as we, they couldn't just say, hey, there's God and we're going to give to God literally. But we do things to, uh, to help people and to bless people. And but you see, we're doing it as unto the Lord. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. We don't do it to get some type of recognition yeah. and worldly yeah. gain, right. but we do it because we have a love for God and for our fellow man. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But sometimes we get offended and resentment rides in our heart because we don't think that we may get enough recognition you see we're doing it out of love and Come not on. out of gain of Come recognition Amen. it's a life of sacrifice yes. and when we look at the the supreme example of jesus christ look where his life ended up it ended up on a cross it ended up being beaten it ended up being despised and rejected of all men. He ended up being forsaken by his close associates. Those that said, I will not leave you, but I will die. They were the very ones that followed afar off. Amen. But he understood, amen, that he was there to fulfill the will of God in his life. Amen. Hallelujah. He got the picture.
picture and it was the bigger picture than just for the moment that he was living in. For the Bible said, amen, he endured the cross, despising the shame, that the joy that was set down before him, amen, there was some joy. As we sang in the song, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind, amen. That was more than just words of a man. That was a reality because Jesus looked in time and he saw some joy beyond beyond the life of sacrifice, beyond the life of the cross, he saw a world that was going to come, amen, and be baptized and receive his spirit and be washed in the blood. And so you and I need to realize I'm spending and I'm being spent, but it's for Jesus Christ. And I can't get my eyes on men or on the lack of men or the lack of recognition. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. Yes. Come on, let's clap the Lord. Clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may should have got a candle to give it a visual here tonight. You know this, and I knew this, but suddenly when I read it, it just came to me very vividly. An old-fashioned wax candle that's got a wick at the top. Many times, if possible, man, they will put it in some type of holder con container. If not, they would put some wet, wet some wax and then put the end of that candle there where it would come straight and erected. But notice here, the only way that that light can burn is when that candle is consuming itself. If there's no consumption of the candle, there's no light. Because right. an old-fashioned wax candle, as it burns, it melts. That's right, yes. <laughs> I was talking to some phenomenal people and they asked me if we had a Christmas Eve service. I said, no. She said, I enjoy going to them. Her husband spoke up and said, except for the hot wax. <laughs> Evidently, they have some type of candle light or candle lighting. That I assume they hold it in their hands and it begins to burn and melt. And he says, not only does it get on you and burn, but somebody's got to get on their knees and clean the carpet because of the melted wax that has flown and i want to say that you and i sometimes we wonder why are we being spent but there is a light that should be uh, a man moving from us and emanating from us to give a light to this dark and dismal world. Hey man, just remember when you feel like I burnt enough, I give out enough. As soon as you quit burning, it's when the light quits shining. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why I want to preach this afternoon. That don't you get disappointed and get dismayed and disillusioned. Amen. Because without your light, amen, somebody would be in darkness. Right. And that's why I'm calling for apostolic faith assembly to come and let us all burn together. Yeah. Let us all shine together. Yeah, but I'm, I'm being spent. Sure you are. But that being spent is casting a light right. on somebody's dark life. And it's going to show a fail. It's going to show a pathway of salvation for them. Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm encouraging you. Don't give up on the life of sacrifice. Yeah. You make sure that the light's burning. It may cost you something. Oh, it may consume yourself. But it's worth a soul coming to Calvary. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, thank you. The Apostle Paul 
I will fairly gladly spend. When he said that, he was simply saying, all that I have. In other words, what he possessed and what he owned, he was willing to forfeit for the kingdom. And in this particular writing, he was willing to forfeit for the church at Corinth. Now, I just highlighted about their flaws, but here was a preacher that inspired them as a virgin into Christ. And we would find here they went about there was good points about them because they were not one whit behind in the gifts. That's who he wrote to two chapters concerning the gifts of the Spirit too. But we would find also he talked about in the Corinthian letters that there was divisions and schisms among them and Paul said it should not be among you. And then went on into fornication. That a man would have his father's wife. He man, he talked about these things. He talked about the, 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 the troubles that were there in the Corinthian church. Um, and we look at people around us in the church world today. I'm not talking about the normal world. I'm talking about the apostolic world. Hey man, a lot of folks may not be measuring up. But then I look at what Paul had just stated to concerning the Corinthian church. Um, he stated to the church of Galatia, he said, Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? Uh, who's hindered you from obeying? Uh, so on and on. Uh, could I go down to Revelations 2 and 3 to the seven churches of Asia? And he said, Write to the angel of the church or to the pastor of the church. Uh, and he began to give a list of those things that he had against. There was some things. There was in one church there was a seat of Satan. In one church they had forgot or left their first love. One church they 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 they, they endured Amen Jezebel and they took on the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. But yet we would find that he walked, the Bible said, John said, I saw him walking among the candlestick. I saw him walking among folks that were flawed. I saw him moving about. Yes, yeah. he threatened them. If you don't repent, I'll remove your candlestick. Yeah. But I want to tell you, he was there among them. Oh. I thank God today there may be a lot of flaws in the church, but I'm glad today that Jesus is still walking. Yeah. Amen. 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 Among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Said I am willing to spend what I've got on a church uh, that is so imperfected. I thank Amen. God today. Uh, that's what we need to have a mindset. Yeah. yeah, it's not all exactly maybe what it should be or what I want it to be, but I'm gonna spend. I'm gonna spend to get it to that place in Christ uh, that it needs to be. Hallelujah. We are, we are too prone to complain. I said we are too prone to complain about it, but never spend nothing on it to help it out. Hallelujah. I want to say thank God today. There's folks that are very gladly spend. They don't do it grudgingly, and they don't do it out of necessity, but they do it out of the pure love of a heart that's filled with grace and love. Toward men. Oh, a life of sacrifice. We need men and we need women. We need old people and we need young people to rally up to this life of sacrifice. Amen. Hey, I don't have any more to give. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. It's there. It's there. Yes. We just not being put on the olive press and let God squeeze out the last nectar of the oil of the olive. Amen. That can be a 
blessing to those around us. Hallelujah. Thank God today there are those that not only spin, but they spin themselves. Would you look at the rich young ruler? Jesus said, I want you to take what you have and I want you to sell and, and give it to the poor. Oh, but he, he didn't want that life of a sacrifice. He refused it. And the Bible said, Jesus, Jesus was sorrowful that the young man, amen, walked away. And the young man was sad that he could not bring himself to the point of a life of sacrifice that was deemed necessary by the Lord himself for Jesus' disciples. Now, this is my opinion, okay? This just a little plug for our current event. But I feel like this is one reason why America won't be able to win wars. It's because there's nobody able or willing to sacrifice on the home front. You look back in the history, especially the Second World War, and they sacrificed. There was victory gardens. And there was people that went through, some of you lived through it. There was rationings on products and, 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 and General Motors and Chryslers and Fords and people like that converted their automobile industry into a war-making machine. And more than all of that, there was millions of young 18 and 19, and I guess the drought went all the way to somewhere around 37 years old. And, and I want to tell you, the countries such as France and Germany and Italy and the Philippine Islands, they are covered and they're running red because of young Americans that sacrifice their all to bring down a man tyranny. Oh, I want to tell you, can I view you in on something greater than a physical war? We are in a spiritual war, yeah. and that war demands more. Amen. The right. any natural war that America has seen herself go into. Oh. Amen. I want to tell you, this is a global, everybody say global. Oh. This is a global conflict. And it is also a home front conflict. Yes. Amen. Uh, up to two, up to 1941, uh, uh, America had been free uh, from an invasion. Uh, and from 41 to 01, 60 years, uh, she went again uh, unto the Twin Towers. Uh, but now we're seeing a small intrusion. Uh, amen. We need men to understand, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, we are got to be able and willing to sacrifice a life of sacrifice. Oh, but I don't feel like sacrificing. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like giving. I don't feel like fasting. Well, I want to tell you, nobody's flesh feels like sacrificing because it's the opposite. The flesh is weak, but there's a spirit that is weak. Oh, somebody needs to say amen right now. That's a good place to say amen. Hallelujah. We need some folks. Hallelujah. I'm here, oh God. On that brazen altar, there was four horns on one on each corner. It was there, very possibly, I said very possibly, it was there situated that the sacrifice could be tied. Jesus gave himself, even though they nailed him to the cross, he willingly gave himself to that cross, to that cross. That's why Jesus could begin his ministry by saying to those that wanted to be his disciple, well, I tell you what you do. You pick up your cross and deny yourself. Give us some folks today, amen, that knows how 
not only to spend, but to be spent. All that I am. Everybody say, all, all that, that I am. am. Amen. You need to understand that you've been bought with a price. That's why I had them to sing that little chorus there just a moment ago. All that I am, all that I'm not, all is yours, Lord. All right. And help us to know, but he said, I spend not merely treasures, but I spend myself. Uh, you see, it's going to take something uh, of ourselves' involvement. There's too many folks uh, that wants to be involved from the sidelines, uh, but there is no game won by those that are on the sidelines. All right. All right. I don't care how much instructions are given from the sidelines. And the sidelines are needed. The coaches are needed. All the other coaches are needed. They need a rooting session in the cheap seats. They need those guys in the, in the boxes. Amen. Saying this is what done and this is what was not done. But I want to tell you, when you hone it down and cut it all aside, it's those that are in the field. It's those that are in the game. Right. They the one that wins or lose the ball game. Right. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we can't drive a man from the sidelines. We've got to get inside. We've got to get in, in trenches and win the war. We need leadership. Every army needs a general. Every army needs a commander-in-chief. But the commander-in-chief don't win. It's men that gets out there and, 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 and brings themselves and avail themselves and become open to all, hey amen, the atrocities of the battlefield. All right, Paul said in, in Philippians 2.17, Yea, I, if I be a offered upon the sacrifice and the service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. In other words, he said, I offer, I will be offered upon the sacrifice and the service of your faith. Because of that commitment, I joy and I rejoice with you all. What was he doing? It wasn't a self-indulgent, self-me thing. He was sacrificing and servicing, amen, the church at Philippi's faith. All right. mm -hmm. Notice here, it's all about somebody else. It was their faith that he was sacrificing and servicing. You that are spiritual and bear the infirmities of the weak. You that are strong spiritually, if there's a brother overtaken in a fault, pick him up. Right. Hold him up. God help us to realize and understand. Think with me a moment, ladies and gentlemen, about the seven, approximately seven years that the, that the servant at this time, Elisha, he walked with Elijah. Elijah was still the prophet. Mm -hmm. But he sacrificed at the beginning the oxen and the, and the instruments. And so he went and he walked and he, he moved. He was a servant to the prophet. He, his life was spent in servitude seven years. Seven years he walked with this man. We need to understand, Paul again says in Philippians 3, 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. In other words, those things that I thought that would become a, 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 an asset to me. Everybody's looking out for a gain. I'm sure there's some of us kind of breathed a little <laughs> sigh of relief. When we found out that the central bank, the Federal Reserve System's on a hike up the interest rate, because that may give us a little bit of a tick up in our portfolio. But they tell me it'll be two years before you see any real results. So bite the nail and hang on for a ride. 
when you're getting 0.03% on any investment as a CD or savings, if you get that, just anything would be a benefit. But everybody's looking for the gain. There was a big, big buying spree on Wall Street, I understand, today. Because they, they just there's a lot of hope. But Paul said, those things that were gained to me. You see, you need to look at the life of Paul because Paul had the whole, amen, his whole life mapped out for him. Yeah. He talked about being a Pharisee of Pharisees. He talked about being the stock of Benjamin. I mean, this guy, no doubt somebody, some advisor in his past life had mapped out his life for him. Paul, you're going to be one of the elite among the Pharisees, among the religious rulers of Israel, man, you got it in the bag. In fact, evidently had so much clout that he was able to get letters from the chief priest to go and haul the church from Damascus back to Jerusalem and put them in jail. Yeah. And so we would find he was willing and, 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 and to forfeit. He was willing to sacrifice what was gained to him for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done that I may win Christ. You see, he did not ignore the losing and the suffering of loss. But he put it in perspective. Right. It wasn't worth anything Come compared to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. 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 Yes. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You know yes. what that treasure is? It's the knowledge. It's the revelation of who Jesus is. Yes. Don't you yes. understand? The world's in darkness. They really don't know who God is. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know that they're one and the same. But you and I have got this great revelation that Jesus is God in the flesh. This treasure in urban vessels. I want to tell you, Paul said to the Galatians, hey, when you know who Jesus is, you've got a treasure beyond this world. Amen. 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 Now, this is how I read this, okay? This is my this is my interpretation. This is my commentary on it. He never he never second-guessed what he done when he committed to Christ. That's right. And he never got down the road of life and got to thinking, you know, did I make the right choice? Mm. Boy, I'm on somebody's trail today. It's mm -hmm. good. It's good. Did I make the right choice? Oh, you know, some, for people start out with God, they understand that was nothing. What I gave up at an altar, what I threw down, it's nothing. But after a while, they start resurrecting things they have buried in repentance, in the graveyard of repentance. That's where people go wrong. That's their first mistake. They start digging up. Come on. They start digging up bones. Oh, yeah. Man, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have been so quick. Mm. You know, come to think of it, I may have been a little hasty when I gave it all up. I want to tell you something. If it was worth in the That's beginning right. to give up everything for Jesus, yes, it's still worth right. keeping everything in the grave. Yes. Amen. Amen. To live for Jesus. Yes, I'm telling you, you read the lips of these preachers. Don't you dig up the bones. Amen. You leave them buried. People begin. Well, I'll tell you what, let me go back and say this. Let the dead bury the dead. Now you got a choice. 
You can go back. Jesus never stops people from going back. He may put, put some roadblocks, but he never, he never stops them completely. But you see, when a life of sacrifice is availed to people, this is a little bit of what is referred to as the Christmas story. There was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa. She was a great age. She was a widow, about four score and four years, which departed not, departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers day and night. Now this tells me she lived a life of sacrifice. She was evidently continually in the temple. She coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. Here was a lady spent the vast after her husband had died after about seven years of marriage, she spent the rest of her life. Amen. Amen. I heard a little, some type of an advertisement about the Catholic uh, uh, nun, um, what to call her, Mother Teresa, what she had done for those of less fortune in Calcutta, India. She just, the, the, the little, little ad was talking about she didn't just visit she went and lived. Later on, there was 12 more joined her and so forth, so on. But it was a life of sacrifice. You and I that know truth. Here was a woman that spent. Here was a woman before the birth of the church spent her life. When you look, this is what, now hang on. <laughs> this is what's so good about parents that got children and maybe you've got some influence over your small grandchildren. But you look at what Hannah told the Lord. When he old enough to wean him, I'll give him to you. I'll put him in the house of God. Right. 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 And practically about somewhere, what, at seven, eight years old. Amen. Here came Hannah. The first time she come back. In eight years, if that's the right number, and she looked and said, here he is, Eli, I promised God. And from that moment on, that young man lived a sac sacrificial life in the house of God. It wasn't long until he was able to hear more than Eli was able to hear. That's why we need those children. That's why we need those children off the street. That's why we need your neighborhood children. That's why we need your nieces and nephews and grandchildren. Amen. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because, uh, amen, they need to know how to come on in. My God, we've got folks, uh, amen, that are willing to sacrifice their children for all types of stuff. Oh, my God, I don't care if they're the world's best ball player. Amen, it's nothing compared, yes. amen, to a life of sacrifice for Jesus Christ. Amen. I fear. I have feared. I feared this for a long time. I've seen folks that I'm, I'm not not just here, but I've seen folks away from here. I worry about them sacrificing their children because of, of things that they didn't do in their young adult or young teenage. And so they throw the door open. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, hey man, why? Why do you want our family and our children, hey man, to become friends to the world? Yes. Amen. That world's going to corrupt them. Yes. At the best that you can do to safeguard them. Why do in the name of God that you want to throw the door open and invite the world to our family? Yes. That's good. And I know, I know, I know I'm in a great cross 
I'm being I'm, I'm gonna be put on the on the cross and crucified instead of Easter here at Christmas. Uh, but I want to tell you, I'm more I go down life's highway, the more of what I'm so thankful for what I was taught. Come on. Hey man, them old men that stood behind pulpits with churches and family behind them say you don't need to get an entertainment. You don't need to get in the ball ring. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is there is an attraction and there is a spirit that locks people in to that companionism. I know I'm in I know I'm in a basketball heaven here, but I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, ain't nothing done on that hard court, whether it be Purdue or IU. <laughs> Or anywhere else, ain't nothing can be done on that hard floor. Amen. Nothing can be done on it like can be done on a church floor. Amen. 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 And men and women don't need to get off on this. Amen. Because there's one thing I've seen men sell everything to go hunting. Yeah. Go fishing. Yeah. And ain't nothing wrong with basketball, football, or fishing, or hunting. No. When it's all done in perspective, right. does it hinder my life of sacrifice? Come on. Yeah. Amen. Does it hinder my life? Luke 18, 28, then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. I see here a man somewhat just a little bit pouting. Hey, 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 Jesus, don't you know we left all and followed thee? He was concerned about the commitment that they had made. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time? Let that sink in. In this present time, and in the world to come to life everlasting. You know what that tells me? God's going to bless my life here. Amen. That's right. And he's going to bless me with a life everlasting. Amen. And there's folks here that understands that I've been blessed because I have lived a life of sacrifice. Don't fall by. Don't fall out. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. We need somebody to say yes to him. As we stand to our feet today. Let's lift our voices together and give him some praise. I will bless you today. I will bless you today. I will bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Could we give ourselves away? Would you come?